Hey guys, welcome back to the workbench. Recently, Ray Stay Quads and Joshua Bardwell released a new flight controller that I'm really excited about. It is the Bardwell F4 and it just became available on Ray Stay Quads and Rotor Riot and other stores. So I decided to go ahead and get one and uh, make a build out of it. I'm gonna be using uh, my period frame sloop frame. Uh, it's a really nice frame that I, that I like working on. Uh, and uh, I think it's gonna go well. Um, I, I will also be using an Emacs Bullet 30 amp ESCs. And then here is the Bardwell F4 itself. Uh, I'll be pairing that with a Runcam Swift 2 and I've got a top plate already assembled with a receiver and a VTX. The motors are going to be Emacs RS2205S motors. So let's get started. Um, first of all we're going to pre-tin the back of the board where the battery leads will go. After that we can go ahead and pre-tin all the pads on the top that we're going to use. And then we just stick the battery leads on the back. And after that we'll be ready to mount on the boards. Quick heads up here. Uh, if you don't watch to the end of the video, there is also uh, a solder bridge you need to create in order that your receiver be powered. Just uh, take a look at the manual. And there we go, there it is already and uh, been mounted in. It has uh, soft mount grommets already in place, which means you don't need your own soft mount grommets, which is nice. After that, I went ahead and I connected up the ESCs. These uh, Emacs Bullet ESCs are really tiny, but they're, uh, they're definitely very nice to work with. The layout of the ESC pads on the board is definitely very nice and very easy to work with. Uh, and if you if you think out your builds well, you're gonna end up with a pretty, pretty beautiful, beautiful job afterwards. After that, you can go ahead and start soldering on all your peripherals. Um, now I gotta talk a little bit about how the peripherals are set up on the Bardwell F4. Um, on the top, you've got the camera inputs and the power for the camera. Uh, the row below that has uh, what you might need for your receiver, uh, also some telemetry ports and other stuff. And then on the bottom, you've got the video out in, a, uh, in addition to a few various pads. I have to say, I found this layout of peripheral pads very nice to work with. Um, the way you actually end up doing it in practice is you're basically soldering one row at a time. So you solder the top three pads, then you solder uh, three or four pads in the row below that, and then you go on to the bottom. And I found this was really nice setup and made it a really um, made, it, made it a really enjoyable experience to actually solder my things onto onto the board. So uh, definitely kudos to Bartwell there. That is a very, very, very smart setup. There we go. There we're putting in the uh, the receiver. Uh, what I like to do is, um, as you as you may notice, my leads are a bit long um, because I like to be able to reuse my stuff if needed. Uh, what I do is I take um, I keep the connectors on even the receiver and uh, I take all the wires and I put them in a tiny heat shrink and do them like that. Then afterwards it means I can twist them around a little bit and plug them in. After you're done soldering everything up, uh, always check to make sure that there's no shorts. I like to both go into the, uh, into the battery lead itself and then go through a few things on the board. That is showing no shorts. So we're pretty much good to uh, go ahead and try to plug it in. Since that is ready, we can go ahead and uh, start to uh, go through the beta flight setup of it. 
make sure everything works before we do the final assembly. The beta flight board can pre-flash to 3.2.1, which is definitely very nice. So this is pretty interesting. I was wondering why um, I wasn't getting any voltage to my to my receiver. So I took a multimeter to the actual pads, and it turns out that there's no power being supplied to the uh, to the 5 volt pad on top of the board, right? So I took a look at the manual and if you see here in the manual here it says that on the bottom of the board if you're using a spectrum satellite receiver it probably requires 3.3 volts um, if you're using any other receiver it probably requires 5 volts if you're not sure double check the receiver specifications online most people, well, a lot of people will just say, okay, great, I'm doing 5 volts like is the most common, I'm not going to read any more here. Then, if you read further, it turns out if you want 3.3 volts, you create a solder bridge. You also have to do this if you want 5 volts. So, I have soldered up the board without doing this. Okay, so I might actually be in luck, because on the bottom of my frame, there are these holes. Uh, and the 5 and the five volt, 3 volt, 3.3 volt bridge is directly under one of these holes. So I'm gonna try to solder it without taking it apart. That actually ended up working out nicely, and I was able to uh, make the solder bridge through the bottom without taking anything apart. After that, I was ready to go into uh, into Biel Heli Suite. I had to uh, reverse motors two and three because I didn't reverse the wires. Uh, I find the builds are actually, they look nicer if you don't reverse the wires, so I just do it afterwards. And then um, I flashed the uh, firmware of the ECs up to 16.7. After that, we were ready to make sure everything was working and uh, then we taped down the ECs. And there we go, that's my uh, Bartwell F4 all-in-one build all finished up. Um, I gotta say, I'm, I'm really happy with the result. Um, I'd be happy to make this uh, make this my go-to flight controller. Building is easy and uh, the setup was very intuitive and nice. All in all, I'm really happy with, uh, with the flight controller and can only recommend it. Well, that's all for today, guys. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.